Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again. It's Zimtex, and today I'm going to be making this Indian glassfish lure. So stick around. completed my sketch here I'll show you what I got um, of course I'm thinking the head and this belly area are going to be solid material um, I think I'll do those out of wood and then I'll foil them most likely uh, I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna make this thing work I've this is new territory for me so uh, but in any case I think in this solid material I can get my line hook up here and then my uh, belly hook right here and and embed that into this material you can also conceal my my lead weight uh, in the front and Then I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll just use twist wire to make this spine uh, and embed that into the epoxy and then that'll uh, attach to this tail hook area here now, I've abbreviated these fins as much as I think I can. The fins can actually hinder the swimming action, so um, I've kind of reduced them as much as I can. I, I don't want to take them away completely because I, can, I think for this particular lure, uh, it needs those fins to really make it look as good as it possibly can. Um, and so I kind of folded them down and reduced them a little bit. Uh, that way I can maintain the character of the actual fish and still increase the fishability as much as possible. Typically don't have a tail fin on these types of lures, but I'm going to leave this one on uh, as well anyway. Uh, just because I think when we get our final product, I think that will really make the lure. Um, it certainly does not increase the durability. These little fins hanging off the sides are going to be pretty flimsy. But as you can probably imagine, this is not really intended to be like a workhorse type lure. I really want to see if this is possible. I think it'll be a really cool looking lure.
So I've still got some more sanding to do. Um, I did come back. There were a couple of places that I touched up here uh, with a little bit of this plastic wood filler. I'm going to continue to do some more sanding and then we'll move into carving detail onto the fins. It's not the uh, finest detail on these uh, fins, but that's okay. For this particular uh, pattern and design, I'm going kind of heavy handed because those are all going to be clear. And so I want to be, I want to be pretty um, thick with my fins so that those waves will show up uh, maybe a little bit better. All right, I made three quick little uh, twist wires here uh, and these are basically just going to be placeholders for my mold that I'm going to be making. I'm going to put one in the head here, I'm going to put one here and one here. need to make a silicone mold box for this lure and uh, just like my last uh, video I'm using this uh, pre-finished trim material uh, because it's really cheap and uh, it makes a nice smooth uh, box on the inside so I need a five and a half inch box So two and a quarter, two and a quarter. Yep. I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll do it this way. Like so. And then our lure will fit nicely in there. I'm using uh, <clears throat> just some wood glue here. Doesn't need to be this waterproof one. That's just what I have. Right. what that does is that gives me one removable side so I can get my mold out easier. 
I'm doing is I'm taking some of this uh, modeling clay that I've got linked in the description below. And uh, I've filled my box about halfway with that, with that clay. I'm thinking that's going to be my pour funnel uh, for this lure. When I go to pour, I'm going to kind of tilt it like that so that it gets down into these little areas and then uh, all the bubbles and stuff can rise out this way. Hopefully that'll work. I'm going to use this same silicone I used last time that I got off of Amazon and it's linked in the description below. I'm going to try, I think I'm going to use a third of it. This is uh, 300 grams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 100 grams and we'll just kind of eyeball it and see if that looks like the right volume. I'm going to sort of do the same thing I did last time. It worked out pretty well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a real thin coat and cover the, the whole thing. And then just let it set for about 15 minutes. And that thin coat allows the bubbles to kind of rise to the surface. Now that I've got that cleaned up, I'm going to put some mold release uh, spray on there. I'm going to put some petroleum jelly on, on the silicone parts because it does stick so bad. Um, it needs all the help it can get. So I'm just going to kind of brush a thin coat over those silicone parts. We don't want to forget our uh, pouring hole here. side looks good no bubbles great well, I don't think we got us a good mold here as we pour we need to allow air out somewhere back here so that it'll fully fill
Maybe. What I'll do is I'll blow in that and see if I get a lot of resistance. I got a little bit. I got a little bit of resistance, so I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut it just a little bit bigger. Okay. It's a lot better. Some rubber bands. I'm just taking a kind of a wild guess here on volume. I'm going to do 10 grams of each and we'll see what that does. Oop, right there. Oh, I went over dead gummit. It's okay. Now I'm not going to add any uh, micro balloons, microspheres in this one. Oh, that is on there tight, man. Mm. I put some tools on it. Uh, there's not going to be any benefit to it. It'll make sense when you see it. Well, that's pouring like a dream. If there's one good thing about this uh, that, that I really like is that if you mess up, you'll get a chance to redo it in no time flat. I mean, this stuff sets up really fast, so. All right, I got my timer. On your mark. Fast hands, fast hands, get set. Go. Remember, you gotta, you gotta scrape the sides really good, bottom really good. Whoa, not splattered all over yourself. You can feel it warming up. Here we go, pouring. Let's see how we did. Hey, not too bad. You see what we got here though? It didn't fill all the way. See how that air pocket kind of keep, keeps all the resin from going in. I think we need to add a sprue here. So let's, while we've got it, let's do it. You take a look at my lure design here. Again, this, this is going to be solid. This is going to be solid. The rest of that's all going to be clear. So we're going to carve all that away for the time being. And then we'll do a second casting with, with the clear parts. And so all these fins are going to be clear as well. Uh, so we're going to wind up cutting it off of this particular cast. Um, but it's kind of good to have that little test done so I know where I need to add a sprue.
also our spine is going to go in right there. And our head hook is going to go right there. And our belly hook is going to go right there. All right, next let's take a look at kind of where we're going to put lead. And I think I'm going to stick with the quarter inch. I'm going to put one right there. One right there. Here's a look at where we're at right now and uh, I've got my uh, lead holes filled of course and sanded and uh, right now I'm going to put some reflective material on this piece. Now I found this uh, on uh, Amazon. It's just a adhesive vinyl holographic um, material. I'll put a link in the description below if, if you're interested in using this product. Then we're going to use our hair dryer on high heat, kind of uh, not melt it, but it will conform to the shape a little bit better. Yeah, I don't think I really like that. Good news is if you screw up, you can just peel it off and try again. So I'm kind of pulling it and stretching it at the same time, all the way around. It's working better for me. I'm kind of stretching and tacking and stretching and tacking. Now let's heat it. With a little bit of work and manipulation, this is what I wound up with here. Of course, we'll uh, put epoxy over it and uh, paint over the seams so that that kind of disappears. Let's put some of these eyes on. These are the frost six millimeter. Now I may well regret it, but I'm going to try just sticking them on without any super glue or anything else. I'm just going to put them on there. We'll give it a try. So I did go ahead and put a clear coat over this piece. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and paint 
these seams uh, with opaque white to start with, and then we'll probably fade it in with a little bit of pearlized white. Pearlized white. If you study these fish pretty closely, uh, some of them have kind of a gold eye, some of them have more of a silver eye, but there's kind of a black bar that runs through the middle of their eye. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a paint on that uh, using the transparent black. And I'm going to try and be real careful when I do this, and I'm going to go ahead and get that bar put on there before we clear coat this again. Something like that, it's kind of what I'm talking about. It's a subtle detail, but uh, it's, uh, you know, kind of accurate to the fish. Of course, for this size lure, I'm gonna use the 0 .041 stainless steel uh, lock wire. I need two shorter pieces and one longer piece. I put a clear coat on that piece we just painted, and so while that's curing, I'm going to work on this through wire piece right here. I'm gonna bend that down. Okay, we're just gonna try and match that up as best we can. As you can see, this is not a very long wire, twist wire that I'm embedding into this lure. But if you check out my last video on uh, embedment length, I do some tests on uh, how much embedment you actually need. And uh, it's surprising how little you can get by with. Anyway, you should check that video out because uh, there's a lot of good information on there. And uh, you can see the actual poundage and everything that these things will, uh, will hold. So I'm going to put this back in the mold and I'm not really even going to wait for that uh, epoxy to cure on um those areas because i don't need to this mold will hold it in place for me all right now let's mix up our epoxy so all of the epoxy that I've been using on this particular lure has been this True Coat. It's uh, something I've never used before, but what they say is that it cures from the inside out instead of the outside in. So theoretically, there should be fewer bubbles uh, inside your epoxy. Um, and so far it's looked pretty good, but uh, this will be the true test because we're going to be doing a nice thick piece of epoxy. I want 20.1 grams of part A and 17.4 grams of B. Mm -hmm. 
because I'm such a genius, I blocked off my pore hole here. So I'm going to have to find another way to get my epoxy in there. Fortunately, uh, I have some of these industrial um, syringes from another project. And so I think I can just inject it down in the sprue hole. Hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put it down this back sprue. Theoretically, it should start coming out the other sprue once it's full. What do y'all think? Does this count as injection molding? I think it does. Well, it's already coming out of there. And how? You can see it's coming up through here as well. Wow, that didn't take as much at all. I overshot it on the amounts for sure. Time to see what we've got. I'm actually pretty nervous about this. Hey. This looks kind of frosted right now, but uh, when I put a clear coat over it, it'll look a whole lot better. But I still have quite a bit of carving to do. This is only the first uh, injection of the of the clear part. So uh, I'm gonna be carving a lot of this away uh, to get down to some of the internal uh, stuff. Okay, so something I noticed is that with this mandrel here, or uh, yeah, we'll call it a mandrel. With this bit right here, it makes pretty large flakes and they don't float in the air very much. But this other one, these sanding ones, they make really tiny particles. So I'm going to put a mask on for that. I think I've got it about where it needs to be. We have put this fish on a severe diet and uh, now we're down to a profile here where we can start putting in our, our bones.
before I blow away all the all the dust between, I wanted to show you what what the kind of the final carve on that looks like. Um, I just try to make them pretty thin and come to a, a point as best I can. This little fish has some kind of veins and things going on. So maybe what I'll do is on one side, I'll do the bones. And on the other side, I'll paint the veins before I clear coat it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Y'all are going to have to give me a little bit of artistic license on this. This is kind of unusual and, and new for me, so I'm, I'm experimenting as I go here. I'm going to hand paint some of this pearl white for the bones. I do want them to be visible, but I don't want them to be overpowering. So we'll put a little bit of this pearl white carefully. I had a finer brush, I think, somewhere around here, but I can't find it. But that's okay. This will work. All right, that that's pretty cool. It's a it's a little bit more subtle than opaque white, um, because it kind of depends on the angle and how the light hits it. Also, you can see a little bit of uh, voids here where the um, the lure was sitting in the mold and all the bubbles rose to that point there. And so we've got a few little voids in there, but that's okay. I'm going to pop this back into the mold uh, again, and I think we'll be able to repair that area. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes on these because almost anything can be fixed one way or another. So don't get too discouraged if you have problems like that. I have them all the time, but there's usually a way to fix it or remedy it. All right, I'm kind of scared about this part. I know you are too, but uh, don't worry about it. We've got each other. We'll get through it. I'm going to... What am I going to do? I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna pour this in here. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna brush I'm gonna brush a thin coat over this, and I'm gonna set it in and kind of try and lay it like that so that hopefully it pushes any bubbles out. It is once again a new day on this lure making odyssey and uh, I wanted to show you all what we've got this morning. I know there's a lot of steps to this and I'm certain that there's a faster and easier way to do this but since it's the first one I've made, the first time I've made this particular lure, uh, there's probably a lot of unnecessary steps and it's taking, an, <laughs> it's taking a long time. Um, but let's take a look at what we got. That's kind of cool. Let's proceed on to today's work, which is going to be to shave this uh, side, this blank side down a little bit more and then paint the internal vein structure inside the fish. Before I get started painting here, I wanted to point out something that I noticed when I was carving this down a little bit more. Uh, I just need to get it closer to the spine. What I noticed is our fins are starting to look a little bit better. On this other side where we cast, we've got a full cast. Uh, there's a little bit of a void here, which will fill in, I'm thinking, when we cast this other side. So um, as bad as those fins looked, they are, I don't know, I'd say just about fully repaired. 
let's mix up some pearl blue and some transparent black and just make a really, 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 really dark blue. I think that's that's the color I'm seeing. Uh, so let's 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 mix something like that up. Wow, I haven't even used this one yet. Brand new. How about that? Let's do two drops. And that's going to be way more than I need, but to get the color that we're looking for. And then on this black, gosh, I don't even know if I want to do one, to tell you the truth. I really don't. Let's put one drop over here. And then uh, we'll mix it in. I did find my tiny brush, by the way, so that's awesome. Let's, uh, let's grab just a little bit of that black. Mix it in there, see what we get. Oh man, bubble, it's on the surface here where I can get to it. So I think I can fix that. Did some sanding and some cleaning up. I did have an air air bubble in there. And so I've kind of cut into the top of it. And my, my game plan is to make, just make sure I get plenty of this epoxy down in there and that should fill it just fine. And you won't even know it was there. Part of what's taking so long with this lure is all of the uh, epoxy work because every time I use epoxy I gotta wait 12 hours for it to set up so a lot of this is just waiting all right let's go get it on the wheel I'm gonna be using opaque black uh, to do the dot details on this and because I'm needing really tiny dots, I'm using this push pin uh, to, to get that detail in. Not a whole lot of real estate on this thing for a decal. I think I'm gonna have to put it like right there. So if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've been talking about a particular piece of equipment that has uh, eluded me for a while, but today is the day that it finally came in and I'm excited to share with you this new piece of equipment that's going to revolutionize the way I make lures. Not really, but it's pretty cool. Boom, a test pool. Because 
this lure has a rounded nose, you're really going to have to rip it through the water. You can't, you can't fish this one slowly. You're going to have to, you're going to have to burn it back. When you do, it's got a pretty good, pretty good little action to it. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.